So many sets, so many themes, so many awesome minifigures. I've made a huge mistake. Hello everyone and welcome back to Lego Man Cam, where today, to my wallets to test, I will be taking you through my top 10 most wanted Lego sets of 2024 so far. With essentially every first half of the year set having already been revealed, minus the sets from May, I thought now would be the time to go over my favourites from the January to March release cycle. Firstly, I'll just cover some of the rumoured May sets that would probably make the list if they had been officially revealed, first of which is the Star Wars Sith Infiltrator. I've never actually owned one of these, so I'm really excited for just the ship alone. However, this one is also set to include a 25th anniversary figure, which will definitely sweeten the deal. The figure is rumored to be Saw Gerrera, who's such an awesome character from Rogue One, and I'm really looking forward to seeing just how the figure looks, and I'm praying that LEGO does it justice. The other May set that I'm somewhat interested in getting to look at is going to be the Phantom Menace Brickhead set. Supposedly, we're going to be getting one very similar to the Return of the Jedi one from last year, which I picked up, but this one's going to be coming with six figures instead of five, those being young Anakin, Jar Jar Padme, Darth Maul, Captain Panaka, and Gwygon Jin. Also now, just quickly before I start to go into the list, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please consider subscribing as we're very, very close to 1000 subscribers after only like two months of uploading, which is just insane. And also please let me know in the comments, what are your most anticipated sets for the year? Starting with number 10 on the list, this is the Ninjago Egolt, the Master Dragon. Yes, I do understand the dragon looks a little bit goofy, but I think that's the reason why I kind of like it. The set does resemble sort of a Master Wu in the form of a dragon, which I guess we're going to have to wait and see how that ends up in the show. But the set retails for $80 here in Australia, and I have found it on sale for $60, but I'm still holding off. I think I should be able to find it for less than that, so maybe around $50 relatively soon. Next up in ninth place is also from Ninjago. This is Young Ryu, a really affordable $25 set that I've already found go on sale for under $17. So next time I'm in store, I'll probably end up picking it up. I really like the build for Ryu and the figures for the set aren't great, but the new Sora hairpiece looks so good and I can't wait to add it to my collection. Next up in eighth place, we have Knuckles Guardian Mech. While the build of this set doesn't really interest me too much, being someone who mainly owns like so many Ninjago mechs, the figures in this set certainly make up for it. Obviously Knuckles is a character I cannot wait to put beside Sonic, Tails and Amy, but Rouge the Bat also does look really nice even though I'm not too familiar with her character. $40 uh, Australian is a little bit steep for this one, uh, which definitely feels more like a $30 mech, so I'm just going to be holding off to buy this one until I can find it for that bit cheaper. In seventh place, we go back into Ninjago, where we have Jay's Mech Battle Pack. Now, whether or not Jay will actually appear in the show this season, he's still one of my favorite Ninjago characters, and this chibi-style mech is such great value for only $15. You get four great, highly detailed-looking minifigures, and for this price, I seriously don't understand how they can't make Star Wars Battle Packs this cheap as well. In number six, we have the remaining Sonic set from the first half of the year. This is Shadow's Escape. The Shadow figure looks phenomenal, but the builds here are also not half bad. Shadow's bike looks pretty clean, uh, it's not too oversized, and the Rhino Bot is another fun enemy to have alongside others like the Crab Meat from some other sets. $30 is also a pretty reasonable price for this set, um, so I'm going to be picking it up soon. I know they do have it uh, for $22 over at Big W, so I might grab it from there. Now we're halfway through the list with number 5, and we're up to our first Animal Crossing set. This is Captain's Island Boat Tour. I don't have a whole lot to say, except this set just looks really vibey. It's got a cute little island oasis with some hermit crabs, some fish, and some palm trees, and the figures also look so great. Cap'n looks really goofy, and Marshall looks so grumpy, uh, but I can't help but love the look of the figure. I haven't even played the Animal Crossing games, but these sets feel really nostalgic and definitely remind me of Fabuland, which I never got to buy, so I can't wait to get my hands on these sets. $40 is quite steep though, so I'm going to be waiting for a discount. Hopefully I can get it for something around $25. In fourth place, we have another Animal Crossing set, which is Isabelle's House Visit. The set is $70 here in Australia, but it does have so much charm that I can't help but love it. Both the figures of Isabelle and also Fauna look great with a lot of unique molded elements on them. The set also pairs so well with every other set from the theme, and it's a really great centerpiece to have in your little Animal Crossing village. The other day, I did find it online for all the way down to $40, which is more than like 30% off, but it was sold out before I could get my hands on it, so hopefully I can find it that cheap as well soon. In third place, we have the last Animal Crossing set on the list, which is Nook's Cranny and Rosie's House. This is exactly what I picture when I think of Animal Crossing, a bright and colourful little storefront, as well as a comfy and warm cottage. 
Both Tom Nook and Rosie look amazing, just like all the other figures from the theme, and the printed elements on Nook's cranny also go so far to give it a lot of added detail. $120 though is quite steep of an asking price, so I'll be waiting to pick this one up for something around $80, which I think I should be able to get relatively soon. With only two entries left, second place goes to the Star Wars Tantive 4 boarding diorama. Firstly, the set actually looks really nice and it's much like an upgraded version of the Dark Trooper set from a few years ago and the selection of both Rebel and Imperial figures are great. But most importantly for me is Fives. He is such a great character from the show and in my opinion, the figure, despite having some flaws, still looks really good. $90 Australian though is far too much, but considering it is Star Wars and it has gone out of stock already, I'm hoping to get it for something around 75, but if I do see it for something like 80, I'll probably just end up picking it up. With all that being said, we now have made it to number one, and my most wanted set from the year is the Ninjago Wolf Mask Shadow Dojo. This is probably a surprising pick for a lot of you, but let me explain why. Firstly, the set has a great selection of minifigures with three exclusive ninja suits being Lloyd, Zane, and Nia, and those armor pieces look so intricately detailed. Most importantly though for me is the build itself, which looks really, really stunning. The magenta and dark blue tones work so well together, and this is a really tall dojo, which is kind of a fresh take on some more of the simple Ninjago temples we've gotten, and I love seeing something from the villain side since it always seems like we get all the ninja hero vehicles usually. $200 is, again, way too much, but I'm gonna hopefully find the set for around 130, which I have seen already, but it was sold out. So I'm definitely waiting to pick this one up. So there you have it. They are my top 10 most wanted sets of 2024 so far. So please let me know in the comments, what are your top 10 sets? or even just your maybe most wanted top three in general. If you did go on to enjoy the video, then please consider subscribing. We are so far on our way to 1,000 subscribers, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching.